بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم پارٹیسپنٹس اینڈ وی آر موونگ ٹوڈس آر لیکچر نمبر فور اینڈ دیٹ از اباؤٹ پروجیکٹ لائف سائیکل اینڈ پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ پروسیس گروپس ویل وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ دس سیکشن ود پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ فریم ورک اینڈ دس از ویری مچ پارٹ آف دیٹ ڈسکشن وی ہیڈ دا ادر ڈے سو وی ایز یو نو وی اسٹارٹ ود دا سمری آف دا پریویس لیکچر so uh, okay uh, what we have discussed the other day was about PM Bok uh, and uh, what is PM Bok uh, this is a standard for project management uh, of project management institute of uh, USA though there are so many methodologies are available uh, around the globe and there are so many uh, institutes and uh, they are having their own methodologies and standards uh, but we are following this one Mm, in this very class. So uh, PM Bog 4 is uh, actually uh, in the market and uh, that is uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, factive by the state and if you want to go for the pro project management professional exam uh, by 31st of July you will follow the fourth edition. However, uh, PMI has launched fifth edition uh, in this January and uh, from 31st uh, July onwards uh, that will that uh, will take uh, as the standard for the examination and uh, uh, there are there are 10 knowledge areas uh, we have uh, discussed the other day and uh, those are project integration management project scope management project time management project cost management project quality management project communication management project human resource management, project procurement management, project risk management, and very important project stakeholder management. Uh, project stakeholder management is included in this standard uh, that was not uh, a separate knowledge area in previous uh, standard. However, uh, that was part of uh, project communication management in previous uh, man, uh, book. So then, um, uh, we had discussed this thing in detail that uh, the level of effort is quite dif different uh, as far as simple project is concerned and uh, complex project is concerned. Uh, we have to use uh, more uh, tools and techniques and inputs and outputs uh, as, as the case uh, is with uh, complex projects and for simple projects uh, we do uh, lesser effort uh, as compared to the com complex project as far as project management is concerned. And then uh, we have uh, discussed that uh, according to so many surveys, uh, construction projects are uh, very complex and uh, the complexity index is uh, one of the very high of these projects. So uh, IT projects are very complex, uh, R&D and social sector projects are uh, equally complex. Uh, but for uh, construction, um, PMI has another four knowledge areas. Uh, besides that 10 standard uh, knowledge areas uh, and we had discussed about that and then uh, we uh, talked about the projects undertaken in government sector we are going to have a few sessions on uh, that as well in Pakistan uh, the project management in public sector development program in Pakistan and uh, uh, there is an extension available uh, for government projects uh, from PMI uh, then we had discussed uh, uh, the IT extension, um, PMI is launching that uh, very soon and the IT extension for uh, the PMBOK uh, is going to be there. Uh, so you know uh, the level of effort uh, will be more, uh, the more knowledge areas will be there uh, for complex projects to follow. And uh, while you are working a simple project sitting in your room and you are writing a code uh, for your uh, project and the uh, uh, number of lines in the code are kind of 100 and your software is complete uh, then this may be an example of a simple project and uh, uh, and you know you are not in need to make uh, such a uh, voluminous uh, uh, book for as a project management plan for that project. Uh, fewer stakeholders are involved, the cost of uh, that activity quite, is quite 
uh, okay or lesser and uh, uh, then the time you you are in need to complete that project is uh, quite uh, uh, less uh, however f when you go for the construction of a dam uh, the project spans mm, in years and uh, up to seven or eight years even and the uh, number of stakeholders uh, for that project are huge in thousands even and then um, at times the communities are the stakeholders for uh, that thing so um, so this was uh, discussed throughout the slides uh, the usage of documents in relation to complexity of the project so so the more complex project you have uh, the more uh, documentation you are in need of and more uh, effort you have to put to manage that project okay so what is project management uh, and we have uh, actually uh, talked a lot about that and that is uh, the application of uh, the knowledge of an individual or the group of people or organization uh, skills and tools and technique available for them uh, and uh, application of that uh, all uh, stuff uh, to project activities to get the objectives done of the project uh, is project management and as you can see over there this guy is actually <clears throat> throwing the balls and you know uh, the art is this you do not have uh, to let any one of them uh, to drop uh, so you are actually juggling the balls and uh, you are um, you have to uh, work for or uh, to keep them uh, in air all this time so the other day we had uh, talked about triple constraint concept and you know that is very much prevalent in simple projects and then we've talked uh, there comes a concept of quality uh, when the complexity index is getting uh, into play and then uh, we have talked about six constraints and the number is not fixed you know uh, so the more complex project you have uh, the number of constraints may be uh, increasing so these are few boundaries uh, within which the project team has to live and uh, actually manage the project so today's uh, context of defining this project man ma project man management definition is uh, different than that and we want to compare project management with operations management you remember what is project project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product service or result so it is temporary in nature and the uh, product or result you are getting is unique but in that case uh, of operations the things are slightly different and uh, uh, you know uh, operations is a continuous process within an organization so wh why the project management is different from the uh, uh, operations management so we actually uh, have this definition of operations management first and then we will discuss the stuff okay operations management is an area of management uh, concerned with ongoing production of goods and or services uh, it involves ensuring that business operations Mm, continue efficiently by using the optimum resources needed and meeting customer demands so uh, the concept of continuous uh, improvement is there for project management uh, but uh, operations continue efficiently by using uh, the optimum resources so this thing is quite common uh, between project management and operations management and uh, uh, the figure over there you can see uh, these guys are actually uh, helping each other and they are continuously so the steps are like we are uh, having this step and then we are moving forward uh, so this uh, picture is showing over there is the continuity of the of the things and uh, um, as far as uh, Mm, project is concerned project is one time activity uh, well there may be um, a concept within the organization management by objectives and management by projects uh, so at times uh, the uh, organizations actually take up uh, their work as projects as well so what they actually do they do the part of their operation our routine stuff uh, as projects to have better or good pro uh, management of the stuff so mm, uh, the, the example of uh, this thing is 
um, a few of the highway authorities uh, they actually carry out routine maintenance throughout uh, the life cycle of the uh, roads um, and there is a buzzword life cycle we are going to talk a lot on that in this very session uh, okay so uh, the the road is uh, there for specific time everything in this universe has certain life and after that you know either you have to rehabilitate it or replace it or reconstruct it so um, uh, what they actually do uh, they do routine maintenance contracts uh, for one year with one party and they treat this activity as a project so this project has a uh, specific time one year and resources available for that and the cost is there uh, you know and uh, the activity uh, now you can ask what is the big point uh, how can we call it uh, a project while that is repetitive now the thing is the, the example is just like that if you construct a house and then you keep constructing houses in a housing society so you know you are actually working uh, for the uh, projects say, uh, different projects the location is different so when you come to the routine maintenance there may be a patch in first kilometer and next year there may be a patch in second year uh, second kilometer and then uh, there may be a third patch in kilometer 26 so see so the geographic location is changing so they actually are uh, designing the, uh, their operations as projects so um, so to have a better understanding and better management of the stuff uh, so operations is actually you know uh, is management of uh, um, uh, production and operations management is management of concern with ongoing operations uh, and goods and services so uh, this is uh, the difference between operations management and project management operational stakeholder in project management so while you are actually working on a project and we have defined that the project is different than the operations so the operations is a continuous process and project is one time exercise now there comes a question should we consider the stakeholders of operations the one who are actually going to use your project should we consider them or not Okay, uh, हम एक एग्जाम्पल डिस्कस करते हैं क्या uh, आप एक ऐसे प्रोजेक्ट पे काम कर रहे हैं जो कि बिल्कुल वक्त के अंदर पूरा हो गया जो कॉस्ट के अंदर पूरा हो गया और जो क्वालिटी के अंदर पूरा हो गया और उसमें रिस्क को आपने बड़े अच्छे तरीके से मैनेज किया आपकी टीम बड़ी हैप्पी वहां से गई वो मुराल हाई था uh, और आपने uh, वो प्रोजेक्ट कम्प्लीट कर लिया और आपने वो प्रोजेक्ट कम्प्लीट कर लिया अब क्या आपका ये प्रोजेक्ट सक्सेस है तो आपको याद होगा हमने इस सेशन में कहा कि कौन फैसला करता है प्रोजेक्ट के कामयाब होने का या ना काम होने का सो प्रोजेक्ट स्टेक होल्डर्स और प्रोजेक्ट स्टेक होल्डर्स के अंदर स्पॉन्सर भी आ जाता है टीम भी आ जाती है प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर भी आ जाता है सीनियर मैनेजमेंट भी आ जाती है पी के प्रोग्राम मैनेजर्स भी आ जाते हैं पी के अंदर काम करने वाले लोग आ जाते हैं सो रिसोर्स मैनेजर्स आ जाते हैं फंक्शनल मैनेजर्स आ जाते हैं लाइन मैनेजर्स सप्लायर्स एंड यू नो अलिस्ट गोज ऑन सो अब यहां ये सवाल आया जो पहले सवाल चल रहा था अभी तो मैंने सिर्फ आपको स्नैरियो दिया सवाल ये है कि आपका प्रोजेक्ट इस्तेमाल नहीं हुआ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर क्या अब आप इस प्रोजेक्ट को कामयाब कहेंगे ओके okay, इसको मजीद एलेबोरेट करता कि क्या आपका जो प्रोजेक्ट था वो जो आपने लॉन्च करना था और उसके स्टेक होल्डर एक ने कहा कि जी ये मेरी रिक्वायरमेंट्स को फुलफिल नहीं करता हाउ इन मेन टाइम आई हैव एक्चुअली हायर्ड अ गाय और उसने मुझे ऑफ द शेल्फ वो चीज बना के दे दी है अब मुझे इस प्रोडक्ट की जरूरत नहीं है जो प्रोजेक्ट किया था इसका जो प्रोडक्ट निकला था वो मुझे नहीं चाहिए इस केस के अंदर आपका आप क्या कहेंगे क्या आपका प्रोजेक्ट एक सक्सेस था या आपका प्रोजेक्ट एक फेलियर था तो दिस इज अ बिग मिस्टेक सो मेनी प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर्स एक्चुअली डू एंड आई हैव सीन पीपल हु आर सो मोटिवेटेड एंड सो एम्बिशियस एंड दे आर वर्किंग सो हार्ड ऑन प्रोजेक्ट्स एट टाइम्स दे एक्चुअली गेट इमोशनली इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोजेक्ट्स दे गेट पर्सनल फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट एक्टिविटीज विद सो मैनी स्टेक होल्डर्स
even those uh, project managers uh, they are uh, they are reluctant uh, to consider what uh, what is our project going to be uh, you know uh, used for agar aap ek project pe kaam kar rahe hain aur aap ne ek road banani hai jo ek city se leke dusre city ko link karegi और अब आप बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छी क्वालिटी कर रहे हैं टाइम के अंदर रह रहे हैं कॉस्ट के अंदर रह रहे हैं और आपके जो फैसले हैं वो इस बेस पे हो रहे हैं कि मुझे ये प्रोजेक्ट विद इन कॉस्ट करना है तो अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा कि आपके बहुत सारे फैसले जो हैं जब ऑपरेशंस में जाएगी वही रोड जब उसके ऊपर गाड़ियाँ चलना शुरू हो जाएंगी और उसके बाद जो ऑपरेशन के लोग आके उसको टेक ओवर करेंगे वो फाइंड आउट करेंगे कि जी बहुत सारी जगहों पे बहुत सारे मसले हैं और वो उनकी रिक्वायरमेंट्स को पूरा नहीं करते तो इस सूरत में एक एनालिसिस किया जाता है जिसको कहते हैं लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्ट एनालिसिस हम उसको उसके ऊपर सेशन करेंगे और फिर पता चलता है कि आपके जो फैसले हैं जो आप ड्यूरिंग प्रोजेक्ट करते हैं वो अल्टीमेटली उसका इम्पैक्ट जो है आपकी प्रोडक्ट की लाइफ के ऊपर क्या होता है वो भी होना चाहिए सिमिलरली यू शुड कंसिडर ऑपरेशनल स्टेक होल्डर्स इन प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो वाइल ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट द नीड्स ऑफ स्टेक होल्डर्स हु परफॉर्म एंड कंडक्ट बिजनेस ऑपरेशन आर इम्पोर्टेंट कंसिडरेशन इन प्रोजेक्ट दैट विल अफेक्ट देयर फ्यूचर वर्क एंड एंडावर्स एंड प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर्स हु कंसिडर एंड अप्रोप्रियटली इंक्लूड ऑपरेशनल स्टेक होल्डर्स इन ऑल फेजेज ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट गेन इन साइट and avoid unnecessary issues that often arise when their input seat is overlooked so uh, uh, this is about operational stakeholder and project management then project management in the context of organizations um, projects are undertaken to achieve strategic business uh, outcomes and goals for which many organizations now adopt formal organizational governance process and procedures and organizational governance criteria can impose constraints on projects particularly if uh, the project delivers a service which will be subject to strict organizational uh, governance uh, so organizations uh, you know uh, take uh, the projects up uh, because they want to uh, achieve their strategic goal uh, so that's why they are this is one of the reason they actually take up or carry out the projects uh, so if uh the project is not aligned with the mission vision objective and goals of the organization um that project is very risky and hence becomes very complex project and organizational strategy uh, and project management are also very much related uh, uh organizational strategy should provide guidance and direction into project management especially when uh, one considers that project exist to support organizational strategies if the goals of a project are in conflict uh, with an established organizational strategy it is uh, rather important that the project manager to document and identify such conflicts as early as possible in the project and should bring up uh, such things um, to the top management the notice of top management so that uh, they have uh, commitment for the project and this topic is very important uh, the other time we were discussing that uh, project life cycle and we are going to talk on that um, so the thing has uh, arisen uh, and uh, project life cycle uh, is the series of phases uh, that project passes through uh, from its initiation to its closure uh, so isko is tarah kehna chahiye hai ki birth to grave jo cheez hoti hai और लाइफ साइकिल का मकसद इस इसको अगर हम कहें आसान जुबान में तो उम्र तो एक प्रोजेक्ट की कितनी एज होती है और उसके बाद जो प्रोडक्ट होता है उसकी कितनी एज होती है सो प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल इज डिफरेंट देन प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल रिमेंबर दैट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट पीपल यूजली डू गेट कंफ्यूज with project life cycle and product life cycle now the product life cycle uh, is total umbrella under which we have project life cycle a part of it and then operations life cycle and then uh, disposal so three three different components make a uh, product life cycle uh, so what we are discussing project life cycle uh, and i have told you it is the series of uh, phases
that a project passes through uh, from initiation uh, to closure. These phases are generally sequential at times, uh, and their names and numbers are determined by uh, the management, uh, the nature of project itself, and its area of application. So, if we are making a house, we say that the substructure is the land and the land, which is the foundation, and you are making a house, and you are making a house, then you call it substructure. When the structure is superstructure, it is the thing that is on it. So, one phase will be your substructures, one will be the land and the land, and then the land will be the land, and then the land will be the finishes, and then the land will be the allied works, like lawns, like porch, like your car way, so whatever you have to work on that, that is called as finishes, that is part of. So this project may have three phases, substructures, superstructure, and finishes, broadly speaking. So similarly, we may have uh, this uh, social sector project and uh, they have to actually uh, impart some literacy, they have to actually increase the literacy rate. Uh, so what uh, will be the uh, probable phases? So first thing is uh, they actually uh, initiate and plan, then they go uh, and carry out the surveys and then uh, they do analysis. So initiation, surveys, analysis, decision making or project appraisal and then they go and apply or implement the project and then uh, they wrap up the stuff. So there are four or five uh, pro phases uh, in that project as well. So you know the nature of the project actually mm, is a very good force or major force which dictates the number of phases at uh, many a case. But you know the organization is also very important and at times organization to have their own processes assets. Uh, one of the example is available with roads sector in Pakistan. Uh, what they do, they actually have divided their uh, project into uh, seven different uh, type of uh, phases and uh, they call earthworks uh, and bases and sub-bases and uh, asphaltic works and structure works and erosion works and ancillary works and uh, um, there, is, there is a, a seventh uh, uh, phase that is, you know, mm, uh, ha is uh, having some uh, contingency planning over there. So, uh, uh, okay, so uh, this is about how we actually divide uh, the project into phases. So we are having this start and this end and we are dividing uh, just like uh, cutting a, uh, uh, an apple into pieces or cutting a pizza into pieces so that we can. So just imagine if somebody is holding this pizza and you know he's taking or she's taking a bite of it or uh, she or he actually take a piece of it and then you know using uh, some uh, folks or some you know uh, manners over there. So it uh, same example actually prevail for the project management. If you want to eat the pizza hold by holding one uh, pizza in your hand and uh, God forbid if that is you know 10 inch pizza and you are holding it or you are actually slicing it out and uh, eating one piece uh, out of it uh, at one time. So the phases can be broken down by functional or partial objectives. Uh, example is uh, like we have uh, said, if we are actually uh, doing this project uh, of um, Olympics, and the other day we had seen the slides. Uh, remember the Olympics uh, 2000 uh, project uh, sub project example project and uh, the project was divided into sub projects now that was kind of phases and that was based on functional so events was there and then games was there and the publicity was there and entertainment was there so all these are you know project was divided into phases subject to the functional uh, thing of uh, that and partial objectives is it is kind of the concept, you know, stage construction. It uh, use hota hai, uh, engineering can the word. Stage constru construction is, okay, uh, we have to construct this motorway. Aaj aap is tarah karein, aaj humare paas itne paise nahi hai. Aap isko uh, plan kar lein. Two lane plan karke kaam shuru kar dein. Jab two lanes ban jayengi, phir two lanes 
शुरू कर दीजिएगा फिर टू लेन्स शुरू कर दीजिएगा सो इन दैट फैशन यू एक्चुअली गेट सिक्स लेन्स एट द एंड ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट सो यू नो ऑब्जेक्टिव इज यू आर एक्चुअली गेटिंग एटलीस्ट के मूवमेंट शुरू हो जाए लोगों की ठीक है टू लेन्स के ऊपर और फिर साथ साथ हम काम करते रहेंगे और लोग ट्रेवल करते रहेंगे इंटरमीडिएट रिजल्ट और डिलीवरेबल्स आपका एक प्रोजेक्ट है और उसके अंदर आपने तीन रिपोर्ट्स देनी है आपने देना है एनवायरनमेंट इम्पैक्ट क्या होगा एक प्रोजेक्ट का सोशल सोशल जो आपने स्टडी की है उसका क्या इम्पैक्ट होगा वो प्रोजेक्ट का उसके ऊपर और तीसरा आपने ये देना है कि उसकी जो अप्रूवल लेने का प्रोसीजर्स हैं या वारंट्स हैं या जो भी परमिट्स हैं वो कैसे अचीव किए जाएंगे तो जैसे ही आपका एनवायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असैसमेंट रिपोर्ट तैयार हो जाती है यू एक्चुअली डिलीवर दैट एंड देन सो यू आर एक्चुअली डूइंग दिस थिंग uh deliverable based uh, so we are actually giving three deliverables in first phase four deliverables in second phase and remaining seven deliverables in third phase kind of uh, scenario and specific milestones within the overall scope of work or financial availability financial availability the same example uh, of uh, adding two lanes uh, every time is an example of financial availability as well uh, so phases are generally time bound uh bounded with the start and ending or control point so they they are not you know operations they are uh, uh, actually are time bound as well so you know uh, when we were actually studying this slide of sub projects remember humne kaha tha ki sub projects same characteristics एग्जिबिट करते हैं जो कि प्रोजेक्ट्स की होती हैं सो दे आर काइंड ऑफ स्मॉलर प्रोजेक्ट्स विद इन दैट कॉम्प्लेक्स ओवरऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड प्रोजेक्ट while every project has a definite start and a definite end the specific deliverables and activities that take place in between will vary widely with the project so this is an example i was telling you uh, in phase 1 we will deliver three deliverables in phase 2 we are we will be delivering seven deliverables and in phase 3 we are going to deliver like uh, three deliverables so you know every phase is actually uh, having different deliverables and the cost may be different you know so first phase uh, may be having this cost of uh, 1 million the second phase may be having 100 million and the third phase may be having 5 million so the cost may be different and then time uh, you know it, this is not equal time phases so first phase will be completed in one month second phase will be completed in in year and uh, the third phase will be completed in like uh, four months and so uh, this there there may be extension to that you know uh, the quality issues may be different and stuff like that everything uh, is uh, quite different for every phase so see the phase is actually uh, is a smaller part of a smaller type of project so that's why we call it a uh, sub project as well so the life cycle provides the basic framework for uh, framework for managing the project regardless of the specific work involved and uh, this is a very good uh, slide um, adopted from pmi usa and over there you can see uh, uh, over uh, y axis uh, there is cost and staffing level and uh, uh, in x axis there is time so um, the project charter we are going to discuss that thing um, the project charter is developed then uh, uh, while uh, Mm, that is the document which actually authorizes the project manager to use complete resources so starting the project and then you are uh, reaching this uh, project charter stage after getting it approved you are actually organizing and preparing kind of planning and then you actually prepare project management plan then you carry out the work and uh, then you create deliverables those deliverables are validated through quality processes and then uh handed over to the client or customer and those are accepted uh, and then you actually uh, get, uh, gain all the formal approvals and close procurements and close uh, financial and you carry out necessary audits and stuff like that then you archive uh, project documents and uh, there, these are few phases you know uh, and cost and staffing level so in, at initial stage you will have lesser staffing level आपको ज्यादा बंदे नहीं चाहिए जब आप इनिशिएट कर रहे हैं 
माइट बी प्रोजेक्ट मैनेज मैनेजर और कुछ ऐसे लोग जो प्री असाइंड है प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर के साथ वो ही सिर्फ अटैच हों फिर प्लानिंग आ जाती है तो प्लानिंग वाले लोग आ जाएंगे उसके साथ जो पहले जो प्रोजेक्ट चैटर बनाने वाले लोग थे उनमें से कुछ हो सकता है विदड्रॉ हो जाए कुछ प्रोजेक्ट टीम का हिस्सा बन जाए और उसके बाद एक्चुअली काम करना है अब आपने सो प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टीम विल बी देर प्रोजेक्ट टीम विल बी देर नाउ देर इज डिफरेंस द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टीम एंड प्रोजेक्ट टीम देर देर इज अ डिबेट ओवर देयर एज वेल सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ प्रोजेक्ट टीम एंड प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टीम सो द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टीम यू कैन से दैट दिस इज अ वेरी यू नो रफ काइंड ऑफ डेफिनेशन is uh, the group of people who are actually working on project management processes and whereas the remaining project team is actually working on product oriented processes so uh, the supervisor who is actually supervising the construction of this wall uh, he is uh, he is doing what he is uh, working on product oriented process whereas a guy who is actually uh, have gone to the site and uh, is collecting the Uh, data how many wall how much wall has been constructed is working on project management process so this is kind of so so level of uh, uh, staffing will be quite different uh, in uh, execution stage and then uh, while you you are actually getting these deliverables accepted uh, from uh, your client uh, you actually close uh, you are trying to close the project and then you know staffing uh, gets Lord, people are released from the work, and they are either uh, you know mm, given letter of thanks or they are uh, transferred to other projects. So, I just give you one example of uh, a project I was working uh, on, and at start only eight to ten people have arrived, and they've started work, and then a group of another. uh 15 people arrived and uh four or five people from the first batch has left and the uh, remaining five has joined uh, the newcomers and they've actually started planning and then uh, the people start coming as the work uh, of uh, construction has you know increased to ye jo log aa rahe the ab mukhtalif kaam hone shuru ho gaye mukhtalif phases start ho gaye तो अकॉर्डिंगली वो लोग सारे के सारे आना शुरू हो गए और इनकी तादाद 130 तक चलेगी और फिर जो जो वो अपना फेस खत्म करते जा रहे थे उनको प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर रिलीज करता जा रहा था और वो दोबारा अपने हेड ऑफिस में या जहां भी अगर वो प्रोजेक्टाइज्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है तो वो लेटर ऑफ थैंक्स मिल जाएगा अगर वो एक मैट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है तो वो फिर अपने फंक्शनल मैनेजर को जाके दोबारा रिपोर्ट कर देंगे तो इस तरह ये जो तादाद थी जो कि 10, 8 या 10 से शुरू हुई थी 130 तक गई और फिर आखिर में वही 20, 22 लोग रह गए जो कि प्रोजेक्ट क्लोज करके और एट द एंड वो भी वहां से चले गए सो दिस इज अबाउट द स्टाफिंग लेवल एंड देर इज अनदर पैरामीटर एंड दैट इज कॉस्ट yes cost is uh, you know uh, rising with the same level so the, there is lesser staffing right so you should not actually uh, you know bundle this thing cost and staffing together they are kind of different because uh, staffing is about human resource management and human resource you are having uh, but the cost is you know is also attached with other parts like materials and equipments and machinery uh, thing so if you are having uh at the start of the project any project you don't have you know uh, you're not in need of that machine on your site or you are not in need of vehicle fleet you are moving in right so you are you are in need of that stuff while you are actually working jab phir aapki pehli stage pe to gaadi nahi chahiye kam chahiye theek hai jo sirf pick and drop de rahi hai aapki team ko aap social sector project kar rahe hain तो आपको गाड़ियां चाहिए जो आपको घर से लेके और ऑफिस में आ जाते हैं उसके बाद जब आप सर्वे करने चाहते हैं तो उसमें आपको ये चाहिए कि वही गाड़ियां नंबर बढ़ जाएगा उनका वो ज्यादा हो जाएंगी उनके पीओएल के जो आपका फ्यूल का खर्चा है जो आपके लुब्रिकेट्स का खर्चा है जो आपके मेंटेनेंस का खर्चा है वो ज्यादा बढ़ जाएगा और उसके बाद जो है अब देखें अगर वही टीम जो इनिशिएट कर रही थी और वही टीम अब सर्वे कर रही है और वही टीम अगर प्लान करती है और हम अज्यूम करते हैं कि ये सारे सेम है but the cost is you know 
uh, increasing even. Okay, number of team members are the uh, same. So cost is dependent on so many other uh, parameters. Or is ke upar humne thodi si details se baat bhi karni hai jab ham relevant uh, sessions mein jayenge. So the cost uh, or uh, is quite high as far as execution stage is concerned. And this is shown over there, uh, and it gets um, you know, dipped uh, when you know, you come to the uh, closing uh, part of uh, phase of the, your project. And then there is effort level. So effort level is quite high when you go for the execution. So this is a uh, few characteristics of a project life cycle, and this actually um, a diagram explains the stuff, uh, and we have uh, some explanation of the thing over there as well. So cost and staffing levels are low at the start, peak as the work is carried out, and drop rapidly as the project draws to a close. And the typical cost and staffing curve may not apply to all projects. A project may require significant expenditure to secure needed resources early in its life cycle, for instance, or be fully staffed from a point very early in its life cycle. So um, this project is, uh, you are having this uh, contract from a very prestigious public sector organization. Uh, profit margin is high, and your private organization is striving for uh, the profitability of the pro projects. So the profitability is more than 40%. So um, the other thing is that mobilization advance has been given. Now they want to establish a lab in lab establish your office. Kendar डेडिकेटेड हो उनके प्रोजेक्ट के लिए तो अब आपने क्या करना है कि कुछ कंप्यूटर्स खरीदने हैं और उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं कि आपने सारे स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट और लेटेस्ट कंप्यूटर्स खरीदने हैं सो so दैट कि आप एक छोटा सा मॉडल uh, सिमुलेट कर सके नेटवर्किंग का लेट से और 10 कंप्यूटर्स आपने लेने हैं तो जो शुरू में आपका भी प्रोजेक्ट स्टार्ट हो रहा है और साथ ही आपको ये सारी चीजें लेके आए अभी आप प्रोजेक्ट टीम को मोबिलाइज नहीं कर रहे आप अभी एक्वायर नहीं कर रहे हैं लेकिन you are actually preparing for uh, the project team to come and you know आप ये नहीं कर सकते कि project team आ जाए और computers ना हो so you are procuring them first in that case uh, this uh, typical uh, um, diagram uh, will be a, you know a little bit change uh, so at start uh, you know uh, the price may be very high तो तो the staffing may be very low or stuff uh, similarly the same situation may happen for the staffing as well so these are two parameters we have discussed uh, so far for project life cycle. And what else? Let's see. Risk and uncertainty uh, are greatest at the start of the project. And these factors decrease over the life of the project as decisions are reached and as deliverables are accepted. Now this is very uh, different concept we do have uh, with our uh, so many people to have. Uh, a different concept than that and that is at the start we are having lesser information about risk so uh, we are actually taking up a list of risk which uh, the other project has experienced uh, project ki jo geographic location hai, wo different ho sakti hai. Ka environment different ho sakta hai. वहाँ की प्रोजेक्ट टीम डिफरेंट हो सकती है, वहाँ का जो प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर है, उसकी इंटरपर्सनल स्किल्स और मैनेजमेंट स्किल्स वो डिफरेंट हो सकती हैं। लेकिन फॉर द स्टार्ट और फॉर द बेसलाइन, वे एक्चुअली टेक दैट लिस्ट ऑफ रिस्क एंड वे एक्चुअली अप्लाई दैट। सो ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द uh, of one particular risk is quite high and we are going to uh, talk on risk management in this class as I've told you early so we're in uh, good detail we will uh, discuss this thing okay so the probability probability level for certain risk is taken on hard side whereas uh, the uh, impact is taken on lower side so you actually recalculate and you actually re elaborate that and there are few risks which has been documented early and uh, uh, they were associated with the planning phase and the planning phase is uh, getting um, uh, to close closure and uh, many of them uh, many of the risk have not been surfaced so you know you actually strike them uh, down 
and there is a there was a risk about uh, uh, volatile stakeholder at site and now your uh, execution is at the top and you haven't identified that guy around uh, and uh, there is uh, lesser probability so what you will do you will actually de uh, decrease the probability of that particular risk so and some new risk uh, may surface like if you one of uh, your project was carried out in Multan and uh, the other project was carried out in uh, Faisalabad. Uh, so uh, the risks uh, which were not anticipated in Multan uh, may have surfaced in Faisalabad or uh, vice versa. So with the passage of time, we are having uh, better information. And the better information we have, better control we have. And better control we have, uh, the lesser risks uh, we have and better management we have. So this is uh, another aspect of project life that will uh, depict so um, uh, this is kind of you know uh, so with the stat the risks are high uh, and uh, with the uh, near to close the project is less risky. The ability to influence the final characteristics of the project's product uh, without um, significantly impacting cost is highest at the start of the project and decreases as the project progresses towards completion. And uh, this is again very important. Uh, if uh, you know you have heard uh, this thing prevention is better than the cure. Uh, so if you are having some problem with your uh, process and you have identified through uh, quality assurance processes um, and quality audits that one of the process will ultimately lead uh, towards uh, deliverable which may have some defects and uh, now you can actually rectify your process you can improve your process and then you will have a deliverable which is quite acceptable to the customer or uh, client uh, but if you are ignoring that thing and now that is very easy part you know you can improve your process uh, within your organization and you know things now you have produced 100 deliverables and then the client has you know raised something well we have some different requirements documented and agreed and now this product is not uh, actually uh, is fully um, uh, up to the standard or the requirements we had agreed earlier so what will be the um, consequence you know now the ability uh, has been you know a bit compromised or has been decreased because you have uh, crossed some lines and you have spent some money so you are having better control in early uh, life uh, in project life cycle and you are uh, losing that control um, uh, to improve uh, when you actually progresses throughout project life cycle so you have to you know bring the house in order as early as you can so um, this is um, uh, the summary what we have discussed over there and uh, over there you can see um, the project time is on uh, x-axis and the degree of uh, what degree of different parameters we were discussing and those were risks and uncertainty and cost of changes uh, so um, in the start if uh, the, at the very preliminary level uh, at prototype level, the client has identified some uh, non-conformance to the requirements and standards. Uh, you can actually uh, have that change with the lesser cost, uh, but with the passage of time and when and the pro project is progressing and at that time if something is identified, uh, then that the cost of changes is quite high. So uh, the degrees of the risk, the degree of risk and uncertainty, Mm, is decreasing as uh, the project uh, project uh, parameters so the project uh, uh, information is increasing and uh, project risk are uh, mm, you know they are tending to be either uh, facts or they are being eliminated so with the uh, passage of time mm, the degree of risk and uncertainty is uh, decreased so uh, uh, this is about project life cycle and I've told you project life cycle uh, is part of product life cycle and we are going to talk about product life cycle, project life cycle, operation life cycle and 
uh, then uh, uh, salvage value of the project in detail in value engineering part of our sessions. We will have uh, two sessions on two or three sessions on that. Um, this is very important. Uh, but for the project life cycle, uh, you should be um, having this understanding. Uh, so many people tell you that uh, project life cycle uh, comprises of five um, uh, groups or phases, and that is initiation, planning, execution, and closure. And throughout, uh, you are actually doing this. And we are going to talk on that. Uh, you are actually uh, going to actually um, uh, um, have this monitoring and control part of project life cycle. So this is one type of project life cycle based on project management aspect. And we have talked, we may have different aspects on which we can actually divide our project life into different phases. So um, you know, we have talked on that and uh, this is uh, the thing which is different from a simple project and complex project and how is that? Let's summarize in upcoming slides. A project may be divided into any number of phases, which is quite manageable. I mean, you do not want to divide a, sim uh, a project in 100 phases. I mean, uh, that would be quite difficult to manage then. Uh, so manageable project uh, number phases. Uh, project phase is a collection of logically related project activities that culminates in the completion of one or more deliverables. In most of the cases, uh, project uh, phases are used when the nature of the work to be performed is unique to a portion of the project and are typically linked to the development of a specific major deliverable. Some characteristics of project phases. The work in a phase uh, has a distinct focus that differs from any other phase. Uh, this often involves different organizations, project teams, locations, skill sets, and things like that. Achieving the primary deliverable or objective of the phase requires controls or processes uh, unique to the phase or its activities. The closure of a phase ends uh, with some form of transfer or hand of uh, the work product produced as the phase deliverable. We have discussed all the parameters in um, these uh, in previous slides uh, given in uh, three bullets. Now there, there comes the summary and I was telling you now this is the difference between a simple project and a complex project. When it comes to simple project, so we take this example. Uh, over there uh, at the top you can see uh, there is initiation uh, process and then you actually after completing that initiation you actually do the planning and after completing that planning and you know planning is iterative, uh, planning is not static so this is why. So you actually keep uh, doing that planning stuff but with the planning you are actually doing uh, executing uh, processes and then when you stop executing and throughout uh, the life cycle there is monitoring and controlling processes so uh, uh, but when you close execution so then starts the closing processes so this is for simple project but for complex project sequential multi-phase project so what you actually do you take one phase, you initiate it, you plan and execute it, and you close it, and throughout the project, you are actually doing this monitoring and control stuff. And then, second phase of the project, you again initiate, you plan and execute, and throughout uh, the processes, there is monitoring and control, and then you close it. And uh, then, uh, there is a third phase, the same stuff you are doing with the previous so while you are completing first phase then phase number two and then phase number three you are actually completing your uh, project so this is this is a, an example of multi-phase uh, uh, so there were there are three phases in that project and sequential uh, thing is there uh, so like um, this uh, 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 diagram is taken from the PMI uh, PMPOC um, so let's say first phase is facility decommissioning and then waste removal cleanup and then landscaping. So uh, the preceding uh, um, uh, phase may be of uh, constructing the substructure and then constructing the superstructure and then finishing and then handing over. So there, there you may add or you know uh, uh, delete the phases as uh, per unit. And then comes uh, overlapping multi-phase project. 
so this project is this project is divided into three or four or five or six phases phase number one is underway you have completed initiation and you have completed the planning and you are into uh, uh, into execution there comes the second phase and that is getting initiated so by that time it is uh, planned the phase number one is completed and there may be third or fourth or fifth or uh, sixth phase which is in closing uh, the phase number three in monitoring and control the phase number uh, five is in um, initiation stay, uh, phase and uh, um, uh, phase number two is in planning phase uh, phase number uh, nine is closed uh, phase number eight is uh, so you know so uh, you actually can have sequential phases one is complete then second is started then second is complete then third is started or you can actually place on overlapping so in this fashion um, your project will be in a unique situation as far as life cycle is concerned um, in phase number one you are actually doing planning in phase number two you are doing initiation in phase number three you are doing execution so in similar time you may be doing initiation you may be doing planning and you may be doing execution so when you go and have this project so there may be answer well yes that is right um, a project may be in initiation planning execution and closure phases in one time now this is very important part of uh, this uh, session for a simple project you can clearly tell the other guy well uh, we are in planning phase or we are in execution phase or we are in closure phase okay so when you say for a simple project we are in closure phase uh, that is understood that you have actually uh, completed uh, the uh, execution but when you come to a complex project and so many phases are running right so uh, what will happen then now ab aap ye kahenge ki ji hum planning mein bhi hain hum initiation mein bhi hain hum execution mein bhi hain aur hum closure mein bhi hai because aapke jo phases hain wo sequential nahi hain wo overlapping mein hain theek hai to ye concept jo hai ye complex project mein jo hum baat kar rahe the ki life cycle ke through uh, project life cycle ke and, uh, reference se complexity of project ko samajhna now this is a good example of that okay uh, so we we are going to have a summary of uh, you know summary of this slide in upcoming uh, slides uh, so let's uh, have a good look of what has been done in uh, construction industry like a uh, uh, case study okay it has been recognized for some time that project exhibit uh, life cycle comprising of number of discrete stages which as identified by various authors can range from 2 to 12 so aapke project ki do se बारह तक जो है फेजेस हो सकते हैं ये एक स्टडी है आप इससे डिसग्री कर सकते हैं आपका प्रोजेक्ट इससे ज्यादा कम्प्लेक्स हो सकता है बट इट इज गुड कि अगर आप काम से काम फेजेस रखें सो दैट यू यू कैन एक्चुअली सो आई एम नॉट सेइंग इट के देर इज अ रिस्ट्रिक्शन कि आप बिल्कुल ही दो या तीन फेजेस रखें इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर प्रोजेक्ट योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड योर प्रोजेक्ट टीम्स एक्सपीरियंस विद फेजेज so uh, over there there is an example of uh, uh, project life cycle and you see uh, project development and project implementation that is uh, divided into uh, two phases and uh, project development is further divided into project uh, generation development application evaluation selection and project start uh, where is the uh, project in implementation is inform inform uh, information and publicity implementation reporting and financial flows and project closure so when it is about the development of product the same is divided into two phases product development and implementation so uh, you are having two phase um, you know, project example over there construction project life cycle uh, a case study um, uh, over there you can have this thing um, according to royal institute of uh, british architects riba Uh, life cycle comprises of inception feasibility outline proposals scheme designs uh, detailed design uh, production information and bill of quantity tender action project planning operations on site completion and feedback now there are 12 uh, 
uh, processes or phases we have uh, discussed uh, for uh, this construction uh, methodology according to uh, Riba of uh, UK. And according to the PMI, project life cycle comprises of five processes groups of project management. So if you actually divide your project according to the project management concept, you can have five phases. But this uh, applies only uh, to a simple project. Uh, this applies to complex project as well, but within the process, in, within a uh, particular phase. And uh, this is the concept we are talking about. Uh, we actually initiate the project first, and then we plan it, and then uh, we implement uh, the project management plan and then we close and throughout uh, the life cycle we are carrying out project monitoring and control activities and this slide uh, is already shown to you and initiation is uh, it defines and authorizes the project manager and project team uh, to utilize company resources planning refi uh, refines uh, the project goals and scope Mm, we are going to talk uh, in detail accord, uh, in relevant section of this uh, presentation. And uh, uh, requirements are uh, refined and develops the project master plan. Risks are defined, project team is defined, WBS created, um, project management plan is uh, developed. Okay. Implementation uh, brings together all required resources to undertake the project in accordance with the master plan. And closure formalizes acceptance of the project output by the project customer and brings the project to its an end. Uh, and then monitoring and evaluation and control monitors the project to identify and assess shortfalls and variances and initiate corrective actions if needed. So now this is the slide I was referring to uh, when I was saying you know, we are going to summarize uh, the multi-phase uh, sequential or uh, when I was talking about a multi-phase uh, overlapping uh, concept of project life cycle. So one uh, for one phase initiation is completed but for the second phase initiation is still in progress for first phase uh, planning stage is uh, in a place where is uh, for second phase initiation is still there and for the third phase uh, we are about to close the phase. Uh, so in that fashion over there uh, you can see uh, initiation is started but that is not end and project planning is started so initiation is done up to that and uh, project planning is started and it is keep uh, moving towards uh, uh, where uh, uh, the project closure uh, is started and the project management plan uh, as you can see the planning is not over as yet but the execution is started and throughout uh, the project controlling process, uh, you know, you can see uh, through mouse that uh, that stuff is over there. Okay. So that is controlling process. And uh, over there, we are having this uh, initiation process. Uh, there might be a point over there where we have actually uh, developed that project charter and we have actually got the approval of that. And there may be a point uh, over there where uh, the project management plan has been approved. But then this process, you know, planning is continuous process. So if you are having this book and that is called project plan and you are holding it with you and you are showing it to so many project management professionals, uh, well, uh, you are not doing good. Uh, project management plan, uh, though maybe in a book form, but you know, that is changing. Uh, that is, uh, the process is iterative. Uh, so this is, okay. So this is a uh, summary of uh, what we have uh, learned earlier. And uh, <clears throat> now we will talk about uh, different uh, um, phases in detail a bit. So project initiation. Uh, this is uh, the phase where we actually uh, start a project or we conceive an idea. Uh, so organization has conceived this thing uh, well to meet our business case. Uh, we have to launch this project. Uh, so what would be the business case uh, if a private organization goes for contracting 
um, our construction project, what may be the objective. So uh, very much they, are, they may want to have more profit. Uh, and if the government is launching um, this uh, project of uh, uh, poverty elevation or reduction, um, uh, that is, so if the government is going to um, have this project of uh, poverty reduction in s uh, some area, what is uh, the basic objective of the government? The business case would be to facilitate uh, and to elevate the living standard of some, some community in remote area. And to meet this business requirement, uh, the project, m uh, project may be conceived. Now, so uh, uh, we should uh, be having this thing, um, awareness of the need for change. So uh, change is very much con contextual, uh, but uh, for projects, uh, you know, you have to create some change. Uh, you are going to uh, change something. And recognition by stakeholders that only a project can bring about the desired change. So that's why you actually take up that project. And consideration of project options. So should we do this or this or this? So there are uh, different options which are taken up. So what would be the, my question uh, to you guys is, what would be the options for, uh, uh, for an organization which goes uh, for the profitability, profitability or monetary values uh, rather than other, uh, what would be the uh, uh, alternatives? So they may, the answer, if you are saying that uh, they should go for BCR, benefit cost ratio, and net present value, and internal rate of return, financial internal rate of return, uh, then your answer is okay. And uh, uh, collection of basic information to perform a preliminary project feasibility assessment and determine possible project costs and outcomes. So uh, you actually take up a feasibility study in initiation, whether your project is going to get your objectives or not. So if you are going to erect uh, this uh, factory of uh, floor mill or something like that, flooring or uh, rice mill or stuff like that, and you are taking this uh, thing as a project. So your organization wants uh, you to have a feasibility, feasibility study, whether this uh, new business will be profitable or not. So you are going to uh, take some financial alternatives uh, like uh, benefit cost ratio and uh, uh, then there would be internal rate of return and then uh, net present value and payback period and stuff like that. And we are going to talk in uh, relevant se uh, sessions of uh, this course. So uh, then you have actually done the study pre-feasibility or feasibility, and you have done um, data collection and stuff like that, and uh, then you've presented it uh, to the stakeholders, and uh, well, there are a few parameters if we do this, and this will happen, sensitivity analysis, and uh, uh, if uh, the bank uh, rates, like um, interest rate has uh, uh, decreased to 10%, our profit will be this per, this much. If the interest rate has decreased to uh, to eight percent, our profits uh, will be this much. So, uh, keeping this thing in view, you actually prepare a feasibility so that uh, um, uh, your uh, stakeholders or your senior management can accord the approval. Now, there is very important thing over there as far as uh, feasibility is concerned. When it comes to project feasibility. Uh, people are so much focused, and the other time we were discussing this thing, and the operational stakeholders are very important. So when it comes to feasibility, the feasibility should not only be of the project, it should also be of the product. So if you are taking up this decision based on, you have selected a project uh, based on project uh, feasibility, and you have ignored the product feasibility, then you are very much likely to face this failure of uh, the example I was quoted earlier. Uh, if your project may not be even used by that organization. So feasibility of both the project and product uh, is a very uh, good thing. And uh, then a formal project proposal uh, is been prepared uh, for your project sponsor. Uh, and then um, 
Now you can actually take up this detailed project uh, feasibility study depending upon the complexity of your project. If your project is very s complex, then you are in need of a very detailed uh, feasibility study. Even um, at times, you are actually carrying out all the design work in that feasibility as well. And then you decide whether project should be pursued, put on hold uh, for future time or rejected. Uh, so uh, uh, I have been working on uh, this project and uh, this is a good example uh, how people actually. So uh, I was hired by a, a consultant and they've actually asked me to carry out a feasibility study for their client. So I've uh, done this uh, study and uh, according to that study, uh, the project was not that feasible. Uh, the payback period was seven years and they had better options available. The client, they had better options. Uh, so the consultant came to me and said, well, uh, this project is not feasible. So we are not going to get uh, anything. So you actually make it feasible. So I've asked, I've told this guy, okay, uh, but uh, that is not possible for me because either you change the assumptions, the rates, for on uh, which we, you, we are basing the benefits. If you are not going to change the benefits, how can I reduce the cost? The cost are market rates, so I cannot reduce the cost, but you have to increase the benefits. And benefits in increment uh, should be approved by the client. Uh, well, that study was, uh, mm, uh, was a nightmare, uh, and uh, the project was uh, not taken up, but uh, uh, the project team was also not paid for that stuff. So this this is a good example. A good project manager should take stand. So this project is not feasible. So he or she should tell the top management this project is not uh, feasible as of this date. And uh, then uh, we actually make the contracts, uh, necessary contracting with the stakeholders like suppliers or uh, we have other stakeholders, uh, subcontractors, uh, consultants. We hire them, and uh, uh, and then we actually uh, prepare a project charter. Now this is the output of uh, uh, project initiation phase, and uh, so if I sum up all this stuff, so what we do in initiation is we first of all and uh, very important part of. Uh, project initiation and uh, this has been ignored in our industry, project management industry, whether it is construction one or uh, public sector, social sector programs or wh whatever the projects we are running. Um, in most of the cases, uh, not all the cases, uh, but we are ignoring this thing and that is to hire a project manager. So the first step should be hire a project manager. Then the business case is uh, studied and then uh, you are working for that organization and organizational uh, uh, enterprising uh, factors should be studied. Uh, then uh, we actually uh, divide project, large project into phases. And then we actually go and have uh, initial level risks, requirements, assumptions, and stuff like that. And constraints are documented, initial constraints, what are the constraints and uh, pr uh, project and product uh, feasibility is done and then um, we have uh, uh, contracts uh, with uh, key stakeholders and then at the end we actually develop a project charter. Uh, now that is uh, signed by the project sponsor and that uh, formally authorizes the project team to use uh, company resources. And according to the PMI, the project charter is the document that formally authorizes the project. The project charter provides the project manager and team with authority to use resources for the purpose of undertaking the project. And the project charter is usually short and is issued by the project sponsor or senior official outside the level of the project organization. Now project organization is a buzzword. Now project manager is part of project organization. Project team is part of uh, project organization. And uh, uh, project uh, uh, management team is part of. But project sponsor is not project organization. He's not part of project organization. And some project charters certain, uh, contain brief general information about the project. Others may contain specific details. Uh, so the name of the project, the probable cost, the probable duration, initial risks, uh, requirements, 
constraints, the project name, and the pre-signed uh, team. Uh, Pre-assignment is the concept. Uh, you do not have that project team while you are initiating the project. Uh, but some of uh, the guys or uh, girls have been uh, decided by the project manager, and he has requested the top management to uh, give that resources uh, to him. Uh, so this type of acquiring is called pre-assignment. And then comes uh, the project planning, and uh, there is a famous quotation, and that is, failing to plan is actually planning to fail. Uh, so project planning is very, very important, and project planning lays uh, the foundation for organizing, implementing, closing, as well as monitoring and evaluating and controlling a project with the view uh, to realize uh, the project goal and objectives within the constraints of time, budget, uh, given requirements, stakeholder expectations, risks. Uh, so uh, in that uh, phase, you are actually uh, do all this stuff. And project planning, uh, uh, the output of project planning uh, is a project management plan and project documents. Uh, so uh, what you are actually doing through that uh, process you are uh, collecting detailed requirements, and then you are uh, having this scope statement, and then you are creating WBS, and then you are acquiring, uh, uh, you are assessing who to work and when to work. You are uh, actually having that uh, team concept uh, with you, and uh, then you are creating uh, um, uh, that uh, project activities. Uh, through WBS and with the help of your team. And then you actually carry out uh, necessary uh, time management activities uh, like creating network diagrams, uh, uh, applying CPM methodologies and scheduling. And then you are going to have estimate of the cost and then you create budgets. And then uh, you define how you actually execute uh, the stuff and uh, uh, then you are actually having that uh, planning for quality and planning for communication, for procurement, for risks. And then you, you are having uh, how will you actually monitor and control all this stuff. And then uh, you create a project management plan. And project management plan includes what? It includes a scope management plan, uh, which is output of uh, project scope management. And then project communication management plan cost plan, uh, time plan, uh, quality plan, risk plan, uh, human resource plan, project procurement plan, uh, process improvement plan. Now uh, this is uh, one of the output of the quality management plan. And change management plan, and configuration management plan, and requirements management plan. Now you take all these 13 things and you get them collected through integration and you have what? Uh, that is called uh, the project management plan. So uh, uh, you, you must be familiar with uh, these uh, terms. And then, OK, I've, I should have included one more thing over there, project stakeholder management plan as well. Uh, that is not uh, shown in the slide, but that should be the part of it. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, these uh, 14 uh, plans actually make up this uh, project management plan. And I've told you uh, the books, the number of books uh, over there uh, is uh, showing you um, uh, either uh, the number of plans we are having and you know collection of those is project management plan or uh, basically uh, the iterations and um, number book number one is of January, book number two as of February, uh, book number three as of March project management plan. So uh, this is uh, about project management plan. And project management plan is, uh, as I've told you, project planning is a iterative process. It runs through uh, uh, even uh, the execution. You keep planning. You keep assessing. You keep uh, redoing. Uh, so this is uh, given in process improvement plan. You actually keep improving the stuff. So accordingly, you are improving all the uh, related documents. And then comes uh, project implementation. And um, this is uh, this uh, phase is very very important, uh, uh, equally important uh, 
uh, than uh, uh, the planning and initiation. But uh, you know, the level of effort is very high. The um, staffing is very high. The costs are huge. Uh, so the major chunk of time is being consumed by this activity. So we are uh, we are following this uh, thing. And project implementation or execution follows up on the phases of project planning and initiation. And project implement implementation integrates human resource and other project resources uh, like financial resources, informational resources, uh, machinery resources, equipment resources, uh, material resources um, to carry out the project management plan, which is the main deliverable of project planning phase. And uh, we, we do have some issues uh, when it comes to project implementation. Uh, there are issues of stakeholders, uh, the issues of uh, team. Uh, we have to actually uh, resolve those issues and uh, we should uh, uh, resolve the conflicts if uh, they've arisen. And then risks are there and we have to keep an eye on them and we have to keep them managed throughout our projects. And then change management is very important. Uh, you are going to change something. So you have to keep managing that and then uh, we have to monitor and control the stuff. And then cost should be monitored. What was the plan and what was the actual and where are we going uh, in near future? And similarly time, what was the original time dedicated for this activity and what is the actual time and uh, how much this will have effect on our project? And then resource availability. So if you, you are working on this road project through a uh, rural area or, uh, or uh, you are having this uh, project of uh, collecting data and you have hired uh, uh, even uh, people from uh, nearby villages and uh, the number is about uh, 200 people uh, but then there comes the season of uh, you know mm, uh, um, uh, uh, there is a season uh, for a crop cutting uh, then what will you do then uh, your project team members uh, will not be available uh, usually mm, in that case uh, uh, you have to plan for that as well. And then performance of the project team member, the pro performance of the processes, the performance of the project as a whole, you, uh, you are actually taking care of that. And conflicts, uh, the conflicts are inevitable uh, wherever the human beings are there. Mm, and uh, personality conflicts are there. But uh, the most important type of conflict is scheduled conflict. So uh, resources, uh, they, you have assigned a resource. Uh, he, he or she will work on January, uh, but the whole of the preceding uh, activities has been delayed. आपने जो प्रोजेक्ट करना जो एक्टिविटी पे आपने रखा हुआ था कि आपने इमरान को जनवरी में इस्तेमाल करना है, लेकिन वो एक्टिविटी डिपेंडेंट थी दो और एक्टिविटीज पे और वो एक्टिविटीज डिले होके खत्म हुई फेब्रुअरी के शुरू में तो अब जो जनवरी वाली एक्टिविटी थी अब वो आप लेके आ जाएंगे फेब्रुअरी में लेकिन जब वो आप एक्टिविटी डिले करेंगे तो जो इमरान की आपके पास एलोकेशन थी जो आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने की थी वो सिर्फ जनवरी तक की थी तो ये ये इस तरह के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट आ जाते हैं कॉस्ट के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट आ जाते हैं कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स के आ जाते हैं और पर्सनैलिटी के एज आई टोल्ड यू पीपल डू हैव सम कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एज वॉल and quality issues, uh, uh, then ethics, um, uh, this, uh, this may uh, actually affect the project with great detail. And external considerations, you have a project and the government change or your laws, which are permits, change or taxation change. So accordingly, you have some issues. Prices change, hai, materials, ki, aapke resources, uh, wo kam ho sakte hai accordingly. So projects can be very complex undertakings and their implementation may be influenced to a substantial degree by a number of diverse considerations as I've to uh, talked on that uh, already. Implementing projects have a lot to do with effectively manage, managing complexity. Uh, this complexity changes in the course of projects implementation. So when you move ahead in implementation, the complexity of the project is uh, you can actually rank it less complex over the time. And then there comes a uh, 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 phase or uh, process group, and that is called closure, Pro project closure or termination. Now, this closure thing is uh, is for phase as well as for project. So you can actually close the phase or you can actually close the project. So the closure or termination of project marks the final phase of the project life cycle. 
and uh, closure may be of two types, natural closure or timely or orderly com uh, termination and the project ends after its goals have been uh, met or it has been performed ideally within schedule, within budget and according to the prescribed technical performance standards, uh, project success uh, and uh, up to the st uh, st uh, conformance to the standards and up to the satisfaction of the stakeholders. And there is another type of closing the project and that is unnatural closure. Premature termination, uh, the project ends prematurely because it has not been accomplishing its goal due to one or more reasons. And we have uh, identified that this project will not do any good, so we are terminating that. And uh, as I've told you, uh, uh, while we are doing this um, stuff, uh, we are doing uh, managing people, we are actually working and we are uh, having uh, uh, change requests implemented. We are carrying out uh, quality orders uh, and we are improving the process through quality assurance uh, and we are actually uh, selecting uh, the sellers uh, uh, and then we are actually doing this stuff. We are also mm, having uh, measuring uh, the performance of the project uh, against different matrices we have set. Then there may be performance measurement baselines. Uh, there may be other matrices or other parameters or other criteria on which we are actually mm, uh, checking our project with, uh, like what was the cost and uh, what is what was the planned cost and what is actual cost and how much we have gained by this time what was the plan time for this activity, what is the actual time of this activity and accordingly we actually uh, uh, make some prediction or forecast uh, how much time this activity uh, will uh, take more and how much time uh, will this activity be affecting on a remaining one. So, uh, so this thing, these things are taking uh, place uh, in monitoring, evaluation and control phase of the project. Uh, so this is uh, the whole concept of project life cycle and I hope we have uh, simplified uh, this uh, concept. Mm, if you go through uh, the slides a uh, uh, few times, you will get, get a good idea. Okay, the summary of uh, this lecture. Um, in this lecture, we have discussed about project management and operations management. And uh, uh, we have uh, talked about uh, uh, operational stakeholders of uh, uh, projects uh, for good project management. Uh, so the emphasis was uh, you have to keep them on board as well. And then uh, project management and organization and organizational strategy. So project management is very much dependent on organization to organization. Uh, it varies and is, is also very much dependent on organizational strategy towards the project and project management, the whole concept. Um, then we have talked about project life cycle. Um, uh, the project life cycle comprises of uh, so many different phases. Uh, we have talked about uh, single uh, phase project. We have talked about multi-phase projects, then sequential uh, multi-phase projects, and then overlapping multi-phase projects. And then we've uh, found out that the project life cycle comprises of different number of phases according to the organization, project, and uh, different uh, parameters. So project life cycle, uh, if we are taking PMI as standard, then as far as project management in, is concerned, uh, then there are five phases. And that is initiation through which we actually develop project charter, planning through which we actually develop project management plan and then uh, execution through which we actually get the validated and accepted deliverables and monitoring and control through which we actually keep the project on track uh, and our stakeholders on board and informed how our project is behaving and uh, then uh, closure, uh, we actually close all the project and uh, then um, uh, we are actually uh, having uh, archived all the data for future projects and learning. This is uh, all about uh, this uh, lecture, and uh, we have uh, we have uh, learned a new way. So this is the end note of uh, today. Uh, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Uh, so I say goodbye, good luck, and Allah Hafiz. Thank you.